Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and are you ready for our next instalment in Christmas in July? Because in our last video we made the bloomers for Florin Longfoot and now we're going to make his felt and fur jacket and I think this has had a troublesome collar so if you've been watching and trying to work out how to do that we're going to cover all of that and then we'll go on I think in a separate video to make his shoes, his little boots and his hat as well. So this one is just for the jacket with the fur trim so I'll put, point you down to my workstation and we'll get started. So just popped on as well just to show you what Florin's jacket looks like when it is finished so we do get to the end so bear with me and the other thing that I needed to say which I nearly forgot and I'm so sorry I need to say, say thank you to Anne Heldeos who has sponsored the kit for the festive friends for me so and thank you very very much today we're on to making his jacket and I hope you're enjoying it and I hope you're enjoying stitching along with us and so thank you very much for your kindness and support on behalf of everybody who's going to be watching this video and I think there might be a few looking around at seeing how to do his collar so I carry on Okay, so let's talk about Florin's jacket. So let's have a see if there's a better picture in the book. I think it's all just black and white within the book, so I don't think there is. I think it's just on the front cover. So here we've got a green felt jacket. We've got a fur trim around the collar, around the cuffs and around the bottom of the jacket. And we've also got a, fur, um, a ribbon trim around the sleeves and also around the jacket too. So that's what we're going to be making today for this. So I've pulled out the haberdashery and the fabrics that we need. So I've got the green felt out of the kit. I've got the ribbon out of the haberdashery kit. And I've also got the faux fur. And I've chosen some um, coordinating, that's the word, not corresponding, coordinating thread colours. And I've gone for a dark grey with the ribbon because it's slightly less green than you might think. And I think the green thread that I've picked out for my felt will show up a little bit too much. And because it's going to be top stitched on, then I've gone for this dark grey, which I think will be slightly easier to see. So just, just choose your threads as well too, in order to make sure you've got, you're comfortable with what you're using. Now, the other thing that I've also am aware of is that whilst we're working on Florin, this faux fur is actually to go around Mary's skirt as well. And I want that piece of fur that goes on there to be one continuous amount. So before I cut any of my faux fur for Florin, I'm going to make sure that I've got enough in one continuous piece to do the skirt. And you might think, well, how do you do that? Let me tell you. So what, we're going, what I've done is I've gone into Mary Angel's little freezer bag full of her pattern pieces. And I've picked out the piece that says lower skirt tier. And it's, it's cut on a fold. So this is going to end up too, too long. But then we actually cut two of those. So it's going to be four times longer than this piece of um, tissue paper, this pattern piece. So that's the thing that we need to be aware of, whether there's any fold marks on the pattern and then how many of it we need to cut. So if I just measure this now, that is about seven inches long. And that's going to include all the seam allowances. And I'll, I'll leave that in because that just gives us that little bit of insurance. So four times seven is 28. Um, and if you're not sure about it, just take your, your, your seven and just wrap it four times along your tape measure, which is sometimes what I do because sometimes I'm a bit mathematically challenged. And that takes us to 28 inches, um, which is about 71 and a bit centimetres. So the first thing that I am going to do is have a look at this. Now this, this piece of fur trim here is actually five centimetres or two inches long and we need it to be one inch long which is the two and a half centimetres that we need because I've been into the instructions and it doesn't actually say in the instructions how long that piece of um of that fur trim should be, it just says fur trim also used for elf. Um, and then on the end of the dress where we're talking about applying the fur down here, it just says use the 2.5 centimeter wide fur trim around the hedge of the skirt. Talks about positioning it, but it doesn't talk about the length of it. So that's, I just wanted to show you how we work on that because we want to take that piece off first. So if we measure along here now, this piece of white faux fur, and I measure to the 71, 72 centimetre mark, which is where we need it to be. Then using a Gipsyon pen, not a ballpoint pen, I can just mark a, a line so that then we know what we're working with with um, the other pieces. Now, we're only going to be using half of the width of that 
but at least then I know where that cutoff point is going to be and what we need to save. And I suggest that you do the same just so that you've got that to one side. So I just wanted to talk about that before we get started. So now that we, we know what we're doing now, I'm going to put Mary Angel's um, piece of um, pattern piece back into her little bag. And I suppose really what we ought to do is cut this fur really at the 2.5 centimetre mark. So there's my quilting ruler. Oops. I should have everything all ready for you, shouldn't I? And then I'm going to use my Frixion pen and measuring up from the edge, the cut edge of this fur, I am going to mark across a line that I can draw along because I'm going to cut that piece off and put that into her into her baggy if you like so that that's saved to one side and I don't accidentally cut into it so I'm just going to do that and I'll come back to while I mark it up and then I'll come back to you and show you how I just cut through this fur because we're going to be using that same technique when we cut the rest of the fabric out and the fur out for that and so in order to cut it I'm going to use my snips it will be a slow process but we'll, we'll go through it and then what I do is very, very close, because you've got this like this woven backing on the fur, and then you've got all of your fur pile on the other side. And if you notice on the end, you can see this line here where the um, woven edge of the back of the fur stops. And this is the pile of the fur. This is the overhang bit here. So in order to cut that, you need to take something really sharp scissors, either embroidery scissors or I use my snips. And you're going to find your line, and then you want to part through the fur a little bit at a time. You can't kind of fold it back this way, it doesn't work. You have to use this, the, the nose of your scissors and just kind of shunt them along the fur very, very close to that mesh edge so that you're only cutting through the mess, mesh, I said mess, we will create a mess if you don't, um, but through the mesh edge in order that you can then cut that out and then when you cut that out you will have a little bit that comes away but can you see on the edge there where I've just cut there's the back of the fabric and there's the overhang of fur that we need because that's what's going to hide your stitches when you stitch this onto onto the um, character so I'm going to go along now and I'm going to cut all the way along the, the long edge if you don't want to watch me do that you'd be bored um, and then when I've done that I'm going to come back to you and we'll get talking about flooring because that's just going to go out of the way and safe for our later stage. Okay, it's been see in a minute. So I've just got my green, I've put all the merry stuff away now. So now we're onto the green felt and I've just got to taken that out of the packet. And as you can see, it's got some quite big creases in it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just gonna steam this felt and get rid of these creases, just so that it's all nice and flat for me. I've got my steam on on my steam iron because once this is made, if we don't get these crease it was like once it's made we won't be able to get the creases out quite as well and also if you try and iron this after you've actually made it you might end up inadvertently shrinking one or more of the little pattern the um, fabric pieces and one side of your jacket might end up a little bit smaller than the other so I think it's just always wise just to iron your felt just uh, when you start and just getting that into one nice sheet of Felt. and then we're going to choose which side we're going to work with now felt should be interchangeable but sometimes there are little minor differences so we're just going to look out for those just before we actually start cutting this out so just make sure you've ironed this thoroughly and I've got as I say I've got my steam on as well just to do that okay happy with that so here we are so that's slightly less um fibrous than this side so I'm going to use this side for mine the more fibery side because I think that looks nice so first thing we've got to do is we're going to get our um, jacket pieces out because those are the pieces that we're using now but we're also going to lay out for the hat and the coat because I want to make sure that we've still got enough fabric for doing those pieces as well we can fold this in half it is quite thin isn't it so we could possibly fold this in half so let's have our right side on the outside for this one. And let's just have a look and see what we're left with. So the jacket back needs to go on the fold. So that's fine. Let's pop that and just get some pins. And then we can just, just put one pin on just to hold that. We're not going to be worrying about grain line like we did with the other 
um, outfit because we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, it's fine, okay. So I'm putting these pieces right up to each other just to kind of hold them in place so that we've got that all together. We can go upside down on our felt as well, so use the straight edge then, making sure that that's all together for the bottom of the cuff. So that's all fine. So we need to cut out two of the hat. So let's just pop that on there, because I'd cut out as if I was going to cut on this, my pattern pieces if I was going to cut on the single, but I'm actually going to do it on the straight. So yeah, we've got plenty of fabric here. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is just pop these on. Now I have, you will notice, I have added on the pattern pieces for the um, shoe, I have actually added a um, quarter of an inch on each of those and on the sole because I think I'll try and do those with my seams on the inside. With the hat, did I do the same with the hat? It doesn't look like I've done the same with the hat. So I might well do the same with the hat and add just that half and a quarter of an inch seam allowance onto the hat as well so that I can machine sew that. Um, but you can machine, just cut them out and ordin ordinarily if you wanted to, and then you can machine sew those, um, machine sew, sorry, machine sewing on the brain, if you wanted to hand sew those. I didn't add any um, on the edge here because, um, oh, that's the top edge of the boot, because the pattern, the, the felt doesn't fray, so there's no need to, to add any extra fabric onto that point just there. Um, but as I say, you can you can twist your pattern pieces slightly on on felt because there's no grain, so you've not got to worry about any of that. Okay, so I'm just going to cut these out, and then I'll come back to you, and we'll look at starting with the jacket first. But again, or just to, just to say, um, I cut it when I'm cutting from a kit with all of the fabric pieces. I cut out everything from that one fabric color in one go. So I wouldn't just cut out the, the jacket pieces and not pay any heed to the rest of it because I think that we need to know that we can get everything cut out of the same fabric that we need at the same time. So that's why I cut mine out in that way. Okay, so I've got all of my things cut out. I've got my back of my jacket and my fronts and my sleeves so they can go together because that's what we're going to be sewing with first. And then I've also got my two sets of boots, my boot sole and my two hats they can all go to one side for the time being i have got one template because i've added on that quarter of an inch seam allowance to to my boot what i have done is cut out one that's just the stitching line and i'll mark a stitching line on there to follow but we also need to note that there is actually a notch on the bottom of the boot as well but we'll come to that one when we come to doing that bit anyway okay so then we need to be looking at notches and we've got two back on the back jacket, just on the arm size. So just really, really tiny little snips into that one. We've got one just here on the arm side of the front jacket. And we've got one up on the neck just here as well. So that's relevant. And then on the back of the sleeves, we've got two for the back of the sleeves, one for the top of the sleeve, which we'll need for the seam allowance. Um, um, the seam on the top of the shoulder and then we've got one on the front so that's all fine so let's get those notches there's no dots on here at all to be marked so we've not got to do any tailor's tacks on this one so that's good and if you remember I'm going to I chose the top of my fabric to be facing upwards so I'm just going to pop a pin in mine on the right side of each pattern piece so that I remember which is my top side um, and that's something that I suggest that you get in the habit of doing, especially where you've got a fabric where you've chosen one particular side to be the top side. Because although there is only a very slight difference, you're going to notice it if, you're not, if we're not careful. So let's just take all of these pieces off and just put a pin in the right side so that I know that's my top side. Okay. So we have to put those pattern pieces back in our little bag so that we don't lose those because they're very small. Okay, so we have our back, we have our two fronts here facing each other and we have our two sleeves. So we're all ready now to start and put this together. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my back 
and my two fronts. Just put the sleeves just to one side at the moment. And we want the, the front, so you get this straight edge, this long straight edge is going to be together on the front. And that's, that's the centre front where the, it's going to revere back. So I'm going to take my first front, turn it over onto the other way so we've got right sides together and pop it onto the back so that that straight edge is in the middle of that folded edge that we had before. And then I'm just going to pop a pin in to hold that together. And then I'm going to do the same with the other one. I'm going to flip it over so that my right side, my pins are together. And then I'm going to attach it just at the shoulder. So I'm matching up that top shoulder seam and I'm just putting those together. And then I'm going to take this to the sew machine and with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew across one shoulder and then across the other one. Okay, so the machine's all set up. I'm on a standard stitch length of 2.2. I've got a size 70 micro text needle in my machine as well, which is my favourite one um, to use. Um, and I felt that would be perfectly fine. Um, and I'm just using um, polyester moon thread. Um, I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you can either check, if you want to check your seam allowance and see where you are, look at your needle position. And then you can then hold your... Um, in this case, I'm using the seam gauge up against it. So just put your finger on your, on your needle and then push your ruler up against it. And then you can measure to the edge of your foot. So I'm going to use move my needle across to the seven, my position, my needle goes across from zero, which is right to the left, to number seven, which is right to the right. Um, and I've got a three and a half in between. And I've just moved my, seam and my needle across so that I can use the edge of my presser foot as being my seam gauge. Sound. Bring it on to the other one, just make sure everything's all nicely lined up. When your press foot's down, you can move your needle, the prep pin. Just try and keep to your quarter of an inch because that's going to make sure that everything fits in all nicely for you. Okay. So now that we've got these then sewn, we can now take out the pin showing us which is the right side and the wrong side because we've got all of that together. And then I'm just going to finger press these seams open here because that's going to give us a nice edge there. And if you've got your iron on still, you can take that over to your iron and just press those seams down. So the next thing that we're going to actually do now is start working on the sleeves. So we're going to take our two sleeves and we're going to place it right sides up. We're going to go to our faux fur, which I've got hidden under here. What we're going to do now is we're going to hold this up against, so we're matching the mesh. And then if you take your Frixion pen or, or a pencil or whatever you're using, something that will, will come out again, I'll come over here so you can see. Then I am just measuring the faux fur from the cut mesh edge to the cut mesh edge, which is here. I'm going to make a mark. And then I'm going to offer that same mark then onto the next one and then make a line as well just there. Okay, so we're going to then take our time to cut through this. Um, I'm not sure we can freehand that, can't we? And just go through. So just very carefully, just use the snips, the edge of your scissors, just to cut through. So that you're just cutting through the mesh on the back. So you're using the blade of your scissors or the point of the blade of your scissors to part through the mesh really close to the top and then you can see it separate like that and then so we've got this little overhang which is what we want to keep. So that's one piece and we know this is two and a half centimetres wide because I split this for Mary's jacket um, skirt trim. So I'm using the side that I've already cut down. There we go, that's those two pieces there. And let's have a look. Okay, so this next bit took a little bit of head scratching, but it might just be the way I was reading it. So we're going to take our sleeve with the right side up, and we know that because we've got our pin in. We're then going to lay uh, one, one of our pieces of faux fur across the hem, and we're going to have the lower edge of the fur match up with the lower edge of the trim. And then we're going to then put a pin through that. It does talk about the pile for, for, um, going downwards, but on this one, my pile's going across, so it's not really relevant, and that might be the case for you as well. Just make sure you get the edge of the mesh with the edge of your felt, 
and not the edge of your fur because you need to have the edge of the, it's the mesh that we're working with all the time when we're working with this faux fur. So just put those pins in there just to hold that in place. Let's move mine along just slightly. So we're just overhanging slightly at the end and I wanted to make sure that I've got everything all, all lined up. And then in the instructions, it says on the very edge just here, we're going to do a zigzag stitch um, all the way out the, along there. So I would fold your fur up and just kind of push it out of the way so that you can see the edge of where you are. And then you're going to do your stitches there. If you wanted to change over to white thread, you can do. I'm going to stitch it, no, I can't get my words right. Stitch it with green and see how we get on. And then I can let you know. So let's move our stitches across to number eight, which is our my zigzag. I'm going to have a width of that of um, 2.5 and a length of 2. So that should hopefully work okay. And then we're going to just fold this fur out of the way as we start to stitch. I have got my pins in and I probably will be stitching over the edge of my pins because that's got to hold in place. So let's just hold, put that in place. Now Sarah does say to stitch it from the upside down from the other way, but I don't think you're going to be able to see, I'm sorry, I don't know how your, I'll do the other one the other way and then we'll see how the fur manages against the feed dogs. I haven't returned um, reverse stitched because I didn't want to go over the fur anymore and it'll get caught in the edges or get caught in the um, seam when we sew the, the um, stitches down. Now we can use a pin just to fluff up this fur from out from underneath those stitches. So can you see, you can see really clearly my zigzag line. There's, there it is on the back, look, just across the bottom here. But now if I go across with my quick unpick, I can fluff out the fur from those stitches and just make sure that it's just all going to fluff up and it will cover the edge of that stitch line. So you're just almost going into the valley of each of the stitches and you can then just pull that out just to make sure that it's just kind of covering those stitches. So just a little detail but it'll make the difference when your character's actually wearing and your um, jacket and you want this fur trim to go over the edge of that fur of the edge of the of the felt so that it kind of hides all of that but I'm not pulling the felt the fur out of the actual garment itself I'm just fluffing it up so that it's there and extra fluffy for when we actually when Florin is actually wearing his jacket so we want him to be as lovely and fluffy as possible don't we Okay, just doing this a little bit more just to get that kind of super fluffy. I think the white, it's going to be a difficult one because unless you put white in the top thread and then put green in the bottom, you're going to see your, you're going to see your stitches on one way or the other. So you kind of, I'm going to say you kind of can't win. But I think that just by going along with the, with the seam um, ripper, I'm not pulling on the stitches, I'm just pulling on the fur and that's just helping all of that fur come out of those stitches and stand upright. And it is going to cover it when he's wearing it, look, that'll cover over the edge and we can see that because this is all coming across here. Okay, so I'm happy with that and I can do a bit more of that off camera, you don't need to see me do that anymore. So the next thing that we're going to do now is we're going to then um, smooth the fur back away from this top edge and we're going to do exactly the same along this top edge, just along here as well. Again with a zigzag on the same settings. And you try not to go too far into your fur, so you're trying to remember where your edges are. And yes, I'm afraid I am sewing over my pins. Can we get that one out? Might be able to, hold on a second. Bad habits, you see. The other one just there, like okay, let's do a little bit more for and then I'll take the next pin out. Because you need you need the pins to hold your fur in place. 
but you don't really want to be sewing over those if you can help it. And then just use the quick and pick just to fold the burr in so we can see the edge of the mesh. Take my last pin out before I get to it. And I'm not reversing, as I said. So that's what it looks like when you've just stitched it. You can see with all that green on there. But then I'm going back in with my quick unpick and I'm going in between the stitches, like the valleys and the troughs, and I'm just using my quick unpick just to ruffle up the edges of that, that fluff, just to kind of unstick it all from being down. And hopefully, and even get some through from the from the actual peaks of the stitches and it does seem to just bring it back up again look so that it can fluff hopefully you can see what I'm doing and that is covering the stitches just nicely there as well okay so that's that's working out better than I thought it was going to so I'm happy with that isn't it because this ribbon is now going to go across the top just there and hide that. Yeah, so maybe you don't need to do that on the sleeve. Right, okay. Let's measure a piece of ribbon first and snip it off. Try not to go too generous with your ribbon because you want it to just fit across. And then I am going to change my thread to my dark to my grey colour because I think that the ribbon will be better with that colour in. So if you take your ribbon and you want it to cover your stitches, I'll take that pin out now because we know where we're going. I'm going to put my pin at right angles to my ribbon because I'll be able to hold that in place. Smooth all of your fur with your thumb out of the way, look, so you're going right over the top of that stitched edge that you've just done so yeah you don't need to pull that fur out because you'll just be making more more hassle for yourself if you do that so there's that one and then right to the end there I'm going to start from this side first I think I'm going to sew the side on the felt first and then come back and do the fat side on the fat on the thing. So let's take it off the zigzag and put it onto it's on 3.5. Yeah, keep that straight. And uh, now I'll put it over to seven. Because that'll give me a nice edge to follow. I can follow that line there. And then I'm going to pick my stitch length up to 2.8. Just to get, make it a little bit longer because it's a top stitch. This is time to be slow as well and put your needle in your work for when you stop because we are top stitching. So just take it nice and steady. Oops, thread ribbon wants to turn up at the edge, so I just had to hold that in place. In fact, if I just go down. One more. So I've turned across at the end and then I'm going to come back the other way and that should hopefully hold everything nicely for me. So I've almost sewn in like a U shape on that. So let me just take off my threads without cutting off any fluff. So I've gone from here, down on the, that side first, across the end, and then I've come back on the fur side. And then we can fluff that fur up, look, and that's going to give us a nice edge to the sleeve. And that's how the sleeve is going to finish. This is what it looks like on the inside. There's my zigzags on the end holding the edge of the fur. Here's the zigzag holding down the fur first, and then my two rows of stitching that are holding the ribbon down. So let's see if we can get that done on the other one. out and there we've got take the edge of the ribbon off just flush with the edge of the sleeve and there we've got our second one so now we can just 
hopefully fluff this up a little bit more and just get that fur looking lovely and lu luxurious. That was probably the word I wanted earlier, wasn't it? Looks luxurious, doesn't it, with this gold trimmed ribbon on it? So there we go, there's our sleeve. So we've got two sleeves now that are identical. There we go, I can fluff this one up a bit more now as well. Let's get that fur out of those stitches. Quite surprising how much difference that makes, actually. You see, it's just lifted up the pile of that fur so that it's all just sitting nicely. And I think there's more places where you can just almost comb it out. So that it's, it's where it's got caught in the stitches underneath, isn't it? And you can... Okay. You can see I'd be messing about with fur all day. So, but that makes a lovely end thick doesn't it okay so let's have a look and see what we need to do next so next we're going to put in our sleeves so let me just get myself ready and we'll be doing that okay so we're going to take the our jacket and we're going to we've got our right side because that's the side where we haven't got the seam edges uh, they've been pressed open and we're going to locate our sleeve first with the one notch and that's going to go across onto this sleeve here because so the one notch on the sleeve matches the one notch on the bodice. We call it bodice, but it's the jacket bodice, isn't it? And then I'm going to just put a pin in, and then I'm going to go to the other side and match the underarm seam up as well. So that's all together. And then I'm going to look for the notch that's on the top of the shoulder, and I'm going to just push that in so that that just fits on top with that seam allowance. So fold your seam allowances back, and then the centre of that seam allowance is where your notch needs to, in your top of your sleeve, needs to needs to go. You might need to just pull your sides of your jacket out. And you're going to have to just take it steady with this um, sleeve and this jacket because there's quite a lot of curve. And we're going to need to control it. So I, if you notice, I'm putting my pins in with the heads pointing up because then I can sew it from this side or from that side and it will all sit right so then you're just going to smoosh your felts against each other your sleeve against your against your back sleeve matching up your notches because they're there to help you match everything up but we're going to have to manipulate this so we're going to sew it from the um, bodice of the jacket side not the sleeve side okay because can you see how this is all all gathering up on the top here so it's going to sit lovely when it's all set in, but we've got that to control and the sleeve needs to be absolutely flat, which it is. So I'm going to sew with that side down against my sewing machine bed because then I can control these curves and these folds of fabric a little bit more easily. That's the theory. So let's have a look and see. So we're going to start with um, one side, sleeve down onto the bed of your machine and I can see my notches let's take let's see what we've got on our stick so we're on to straight stitch again and we're doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance so i am going to put my needle now i'm not going to have my oh, this gets confusing doesn't it i need to switch my needle the other side because we've got these this big bulk of all these creases let me just take my press of foot off if we if we sew with the needle to the right hand side which is here We've got all of this onto our sleeve and that's going to make it difficult to manoeuvre this extra fabric we've got underneath the sleeve where we got those folds in the fabric because we'll be going round with most of the presser foot onto our sleeve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my needle across to the left instead because I then have only got a small amount of my presser foot on my sleeve and that will allow me then to manipulate these extra folds of fabric better. I hope that makes sense. So, there we go. So let's just move our needle across then from 3.5 to uh, zero. And I'm gonna to have to eyeball my quarter of an inch seam allowance, but I'm comfortable doing that. If you need to just use your Frixion pen, where's my Frixion pen gum? Here. And if you want to measure your quarter of an inch seam allowance and draw a line that you're going to follow for your stitching line, then please do that if you want to. There's nothing wrong with doing that at all. You won't see it through your felt, so don't worry. But I can kind of see where I want to be, I think, with the middle of my presser foot. So I'm going to take the first pin out now that I'm in position. A couple of stitches forward. 
a couple of stitches back and then I'm going to stop with my needle in the work so that I can now be hands free. So then we can start almost immediately to start and twist this because we've got to start and sew and we've got pins in the way so we're going to take those out. And every now and again, I'm going to lift up my presser foot with my needle in my work so that I can manipulate the fabric. And we just need to be able to do the next two or three stitches straight. That's all we need to do. And then we can stop and lift the presser foot again and manipulate it to work again. So that's all I'm trying to do at the moment is just make sure that I can get those next few stitches done and that I'm happy. So I'm going to go press up, press up lift up my presser foot. And now I can start and pull the front of the... the, the, the um, bodice the front of the jacket to the back because that will help take some of the pressure off the point that I've got coming up to now just make sure that your raw edges are staying together mine's wanting to shift slightly could be the way I've pinned it and my seam allowance needs to be pinned open as well but this is where if you've got the point of your blade for your quick unpick or you've got an awl um, an awl is an awl or a pointy tool it's one of these so it's just got a spike on the end it's, pro it's probably better than a quick unpick because a quick unpick's got the blade further down then you can you can't get your fingers underneath your presser foot but if you use your awl you can hold things together for long enough and get much closer to it before you have to stop with your machine and your needle it just it's just like a an extra hand really so now i'm going to take more of that that front bodice back and we're on the very top of the shoulder now. So I've got some at the front and some at the back. A few more stitches round and stopping again. Lift up my presser foot. And now I'm going to smooth the rest of this back down and out the way. Just relieves the pressure on the, on the foot as well, on the, on the sleeve. Lift it up again and just manipulate that fabric. Just open out that crease if you have to out as you go and just take your time with these because these are fiddly okay we're about there but I just need to just manipulate that round a bit more and do you know what I've got fur tickling on my nose I can feel it and on my cheeks so you will need to be careful if you are asthmatic or you've got any problems with your breathing I would suggest you actually wear a um, like a covid face mask really while you're doing these if you're working with the felt because last thing you want is to trigger an asthma attack is it so let's have a look and see so here we go so with doing that we've got a nice um, line of stitching on our jacket and if we turn it over you can see where those creases were but none of those have been sewn into our sleeve so when we turn it round there's no puckers on any of that sleeve at all and when we fold that in half that's going to sit really nice and beautifully for us and look like a lovely fitted jacket. So I'm just going to pop the other one in exactly the same way. Um, you don't need to see me do that because you've already seen me do that and I'll come back when I've finished the other one. If you need to see again, just rewind the video to the start of this chapter and then you can go forward again um, to see how that is. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so we've got our two sleeves in there completely pucker free. The next thing that we're going to be working on is the collar. Now, there's been such a lot of debate about the collar in the um, main lunar lapping group chat because the directions tell you to cut a 10 centimetre piece, which is actually four inches. But if you had four inches around here, four inches is actually too long. So you've got an inch there. You've got one and a half inches there, so that's um, one, two, two and a half. And then you've got another inch there, so that's three and a half inches for the whole of the collar. But the collar has a little revere that goes over the top here to hide the edge of the fabric. So you're taking one centimetre off there. So three and a half centimetres is just about eight. So you're taking off one for the um, front revere and one for the second revere. So really you're about two and a half inches. And when I just measured this and just roughly just held it up against it I think about three inches is probably is all you're going to need to have because that revere there goes over the edge of the collar just to neaten that down so you're not going right up to the edge there and just by walking the I'll do it the other side instead and you can see just by walking because we've got a notch on the collar which is where we attach the fur from so if we just walk this along
And even with a little bit of a gather, we're at, th we're at that notch just there, aren't we? Oh, my nose is tickling. And we've got two layers of this to put on together. So I'm going to work with my three inches. Let's see how it works out and then we can, I'll adjust it. If, I've, if, I've, if it doesn't work out for me, I'll put a note on the screen now so you can see. So I'm going to cut two pieces of collar fur at three inches. That's one. Oh, I've got fluffy in my nose again. Oh, it's tickling like crazy. Let's measure that against there. Use your ruler, Claire, it'll be easy at that. So there's another mark there. So these are our two pieces of collar. But of course now that means that the snips on the cutting guide are slightly out because this again is where it all gets confusing. So we've got our two pieces of the same length um, fur for our co collar. And we've got our fur cutting guide lower and our fur cutting guide upper. And because I couldn't work out what was happening with this, what I'm gonna do, oh, nose tickling, is I'm going to snip up through those lines on the cutting collar, just as it is for the four inch, because I just want to, and this, I'm just snipping on the pattern only, because I want to understand what this is going to do. So on the lower collar, we only have three snips. And let's just see if one of those is at the halfway point. Yes, it is. And then one's in from the edge. Okay. So we're just learning together on this bit. And then this one here for cutting guide. So the lower collar has got three snips. One's in the middle and then one's towards one edge and one towards the other. On the fur cutting collar, we don't have the same places because what's going to happen is that lower guide, upper guide. As the fur is spread, so I've got my upper guide on top and I've got my lower guide on the bottom. As the fur goes round the collar, these are going to open up. Yeah, okay, so let me just put a little like crease in it just to stimulate, sim stimulate, simulate what's gonna happen. And sometimes you can work things out with paper a bit more easily than you can with anything else. So if I do that kind of pinch it out, that will show that that's what's gonna happen as this goes around the corner, hopefully. You get the idea that the, the splits are going to actually spread as they're over. So then the over collar goes over the top and then, so the start is together, but then can you see how this one's opening out? This one here, this bit here, is going to then get attached to there so that this is actually covering the, the gaps in the snips made by the other one and then we're going to when we turn it over we actually spread that and we attach by hand just those we almost sew it in it like a little godot pleat don't we with it being flat on the top and then on the other so hopefully that makes sense with that as to what we're doing because that's why i wanted to work it out so we we've taken some of the length out of ours so we need to make sure that we've got the snips in the right place so let's work with the lower one first, and I'm going to put an L on mine for lower, just so that I know just where on my stitching line is, because you can I bet I get interrupted and then I'll miss myself, um, miss my um, where I am, and a U on the upper one. Okay, so I've got an L and a U for that, so I know where I am. So the lower guide is easier because we know when we fold the pattern piece in half, we've got one snip in half. So let's do that first. Let's fold the fur on top of itself, get our mesh edges together, not the ends of the fur, the mesh edges together. And then we're going three quarters of the way through the fur. So let's find my snips and I'm going to then cut three quarters of the way through this fur. Not all the way, don't get carried away and forget yourself to there. Okay, so that's three quarters of the way there. Then just have, we can put this into quarters again, can't we? So then the snip for the le for the second one is just over halfway, but towards the outside edge. So let's do this again. So that's onto that snip. So we're going to fold it in half, but we're going to go slightly towards the outside edge. So I'm going to do a snip just here. 
We've got some leeway because the fur will hide a multitude of sins. So that's almost three quarters of the way through. And now I can use that edge there to measure this one so that at least they're equal. Okay, so it's about there. Is that right? We can just measure it in from the edge. So I've got just under one and a half centimetres from the edge. So that can be equal. And I'm cutting on the same side for all of them. The same long edge is what I'm cutting through. And I'm going to go through three quarters on that one as well. So that's the long one, okay? So I've got the two on the side and I've got the one in the halfway point. So that's my lower. So maybe we'll attach that straight away and then we'll kind of come back to the upper in a second. Because that will also help us, won't it? So we want the first side facing up, facing upwards. So we're going to start at that notch with the edge of the um, fur and put a pin. So I've only got one pin on that front jacket edge because it's only a, like a small amount. Then I'm going to go to the other side, to the other jacket edge, and I'm going to put a pin in to match, match that up with the other edge. That's a bit of a bigger pin, let's use a smaller one. Okay, and now the rest of this needs to cut, so the middle of the fur under collar needs to go into the middle of the back of the jacket because we know that's the halfway point. So there's my slit, and that's going to go on there. So those are your reference points, and you're trying to get your raw edges together, although we know we can fluff that fur out, can't we? Then because this fur is gonna try and sort of pull it in, I'm gonna put one just on the back of the jacket as well as that, whereas that kind of spins around, where the curve of the neckline is, just to hold it in place. And this one again, that's where the extra guy has gone, hasn't it? And there's that one for you, okay. So that's how that's looking, but we can see we've got a split just in there and we've got a split in there and a split just there. So we've got those three splits. Let's do this bit first. So where's my machine? That's how they come away. Back down to my two 2.5 and my 2.5 zigzag width and then two stitch length. And again, we've got to sew from the top because the feed dogs don't like sewing over the fur. So this is going to be a little bit tricky because you've got to try and identify where the edge of your jacket is. But again, I'm going to move my, oh no, I can't on this one. We can't move the needle across because we need that for the zigzag bit. But try not to be too hung up on this bit, this bit sewing it on because it is going to be hidden. We know we can fluff up that fur to hide the stitches like we did on the bottom down here. So don't worry too much. But just try and find your way. And if you feel like you want to hand stitch this bit on, you could do. We'll see how this goes with machine stitching. And if it doesn't go well, I will resort to hand stitching. Because some things might take a little bit longer, but... It's worth it if you get it right in the end. So taking my pins out as I go. Sorry if my hands are in the way. It's really hard sometimes to, especially on small things, to, to be able to just keep that all together. So let's put all that in. Use your pin just to keep your fur out the way. Or you can use your awl, wherever that's gone to, or your quick and pick. Holding everything down together so you can see where you're stitching. And I'm just kind of bunching my jacket together, so I'm almost sewing in a straight line with it, if we can. Just take out your pins as you come to them. I'm just trying to eyeball where you are off the edge of that jacket. And I am going to just reverse stitch just just first stitch here. Okay. Let's have a look, see how we did. If I find my... Okay, that looks like okay. 
So yeah, I've just caught it on the edge of the, of the felt and I'm happy with that, that I've caught it on. It's probably going a little bit narrow in some places, but I'm not gonna worry too much. So that's the under collar on. So now we should take our upper collar and let's have a look for the upper collar and see if we can work out where those slits are there. So we've got one that's not quite over the top of the one at the end. So where the end slits are, we want to come in slightly from um, towards the side edge from that. So let's put that one in first. Where's my seam gauge gone? Because I'm just going to measure this slightly. Oops, I'll find it. There we go. So working on the back here, that was just under one and a half centimetres. So I'm going to go about three quarters of a centimetre with this first one and do a line. This isn't an exact science, folks, as you can see. I'm kind of, I'm kind of winging it a bit, but I'm hoping that it's going to be OK. And at least you can see what I've done and we can improve yours based on what I've done. So I've gone too far that way, haven't I? Right, so my first place is wrong. So let me just put those snips in. So it's closer to the edge than the first snip is. I've gone about quarter, three, three quarters of a centimeter in on both ends. Okay, and just three quarters of the way through the fur. And then, the other one was on the middle, wasn't it? So I'm just put, laying the pattern pieces, sorry, you can't see, can you? I'm just laying the pattern pieces over the top and kind of using that to work it out. So the, the upper collar is kind of falling right in between the, the stitch marks, the um, cut marks for the lower collar on that those two sections. So in here if you look so that this this line here is in the middle of that section there on the lower collar and this cut here is in the middle of that section there and there on this one so if i put can't do that can i've got to measure again so how wide are my sections two centimeters so one centimeter in from that one should be a line i'm just marking it on the back of my fabric Yeah, one centimetre from there. Yeah, and one centimetre from there. Because that gives us, so that gives us that quite a big one on the end, but then it's got the two cuts in, so I'm happy with that. Okay. As I say, if I'm not in quite the right place, I will tell you at the end, or I'll put a, a, a um, note on it so that you know. like quite a big big middle section on mine but anyway let's have a go and see so now I'm going to take the the uncut edge and I'm going to sit it right on top so you've got both lots of fur are both on top of each other I think I'm going to hand stitch this one on because I think it's going to be really difficult to control those furs on top of each other so I'm just marking, making them start and stop at the same places at the notch it's so making it a super furry collar. And then the other place, I'm just tucking all the fur in on the under collar and then stitching and just more pinning that fur down there. Okay, let's get a hand sewing needle because I think that's going to be much easier to manage. Hand sewing needle. And I'm gonna use my green thread again. Hand sewing needle. Thread it up with green thread. because we know we can pull the stitches out through the fur, don't we? And then I'm just going to do my quilter's knot, give us me a knot. Take off the ends of the thread. Right, okay, let's have a look. So, there's my mesh of my under collar, putting it right on top of the other. 
and then I'm going to take a stitch through and I'm going to, you have to be quite deep because you need to get through both lots of thread and I'm just going to fur and I'm just going to do um, a stitch, a back stitch along this edge catching through all of the edges. So you can make sure that you, you've caught it by just holding onto your um, collar and just giving it a wiggle and it should should stay put. And if you when you go through the needle, you go through and just gently just touch your finger with it, you know that then that you're all the way through. Just use the end of your needle just to tuck your fur under if you need to. I'm going through to my finger so I can feel that that needle's gone all the way through. And sometimes, I know that people struggle with hand stitching sometimes, but some, sometimes it's just going to give you a much better, better finish than trying to tear your hair out, trying to make something happen on a machine that it just doesn't want to do, especially when you're working with you know, tricky fabrics such as faux fur. I think that would be definitely in the line of tricky fabrics to work with. I don't think it's going to surprise anybody that the collar is going to be the longest chapter on this on this make. So we've had to take the length out really haven't we? We've had to adjust those measurements on the cutting edge to make that fit right. There's no way I don't think that you could get a four inch piece, it must be a typo, um, why, how you can get a four inch piece of um, faux fur onto this jacket. So I'm just going to put two stitches in place and now I'm just going to go to my collar, separate them and just give my upper collar a pull and that's not going anywhere. So that's fine. I'm happy that I've caught all of that down. If I hadn't have done, I'd just go back and put just a few more stitches in. I've um, done a couple of stitches in place just to hold that collar in place. Now, this is the tricky bit or this was the bit that we couldn't understand before. So now when we look from underneath... If we spread out the upper collar, we are now, oh, I'll tell you what, let's get our, let's get our needle full first because that will actually help us. So we're gonna get a um, hand sewing needle again and some white thread this time. Right, so, needle and thread. I've used double, but you could use single, it doesn't matter. Quarter's not on the end so that we've got that all together. And just snip my threads off the end there. Right, okay. So we've got a really small piece on the upper collar first and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold back the fur ends of the lower collar all the way up there, using, you can use your needle if you need to and I'm going to expose the cut edge of the upper collar and the lower collar and then I'm just going to put the ends together, I'm going to just take my, start off at the neck edge first because I can bury my knot in there and then I'm taking little stitches through first the under collar mesh and then through the upper collar mesh and just joining those together. So you're joining the upper collar and the lower collar together along that cut edge that you did earlier. So you've separated out those, you've separated out those snips that you put through, those cuts you put through. And I'm just using a, an over stitch. Just making sure my stitches get out of the way. Oops. Fur flying around all over the place. And just doing some, sti some stitches going up to the top. Along that cut edge. And this is what's going to make it a really nice full collar, but it's just difficult to, I suppose it's difficult to kind of explain in, the, in, for, in words, isn't it, for in the book. If you get any fur caught in it, just, just use your edge of a needle just to take it out. I'm doing a double stitch at the top just to hold that. And now I'm just going to come back down again so that I'm finishing with my thread down at the bottom of the collar. Because then we can travel along that neck edge to the next place where it's snipped. Okay, 
to show you on here. Upper and lower. So there's our upper, there's our lower. And what I've done is I have opened up the upper collar snip and I'm taking that lower collar snip so it's at an angle and I've just stitched those two edges together. Where's my, which way have I got lower? That's right. So I've just pulled that and I've just sewn those two edges together. It, it works better in, in reality than it did on the paper. And then I'm going to now just take a stitch down to the bottom of the next one. Where's my threads gone? Cut down there. Just keep pulling any fur out that gets trapped in your stitches because you want all that fur on the front to give maximum fluffiness. And then I'm moving along now to the next one. And now I'm going to fold the fur back on the upper collar, sorry, lower collar. And I can see the edge of the upper collar there. And I'm going to put some stitches in there to hold that together. Oh, fur on my nose, gosh. I'm just going to snip through my mesh a little bit more. Take it, open it out a little bit more. just sewing the ends of the mesh together not too close to the edge because although it's it's not necessarily fraying it could the stitches could come undone so can you see just there look here there's my drawn edge on both those snips one's from the upper collar one's from the lower collar and I've just pulled those apart and I'm just sewing them across together and then I'm coming back down again so that puts my thread down at the needle edge, at the neck edge, to move on to the next piece. So now I can smooth that fur out of the way with my needle again, as best as I can. Move under to the other side of the cut edge with my needle. And now by spreading those two pieces of fur there, I can then sew the upper and the lower together again. And I'm just using a loose overstitch because the fur is going to hide all of this. Believe me, the way it's fluffing off onto my nose. Oh my goodness. Right, okay. So there's a couple of stitches at the top there and then come back down again. And then I'm going to travel along through the, through the mesh just to the next cut point. And what's happening is this collar is just spreading out really nicely but making it lovely and full. And then again we're at the next one. So again I'm just going to open that out and just stitch it as best as I can because this one's not stretching quite as nicely. But as long as this kind of the, the points at the tips are sort of together I think you'll be fine. We'll see afterwards won't we when I've done this. So I'm just going to sew back down to the other side again. And I'm going to move the fur out of the way so that we're over towards the next one. This centre back isn't sitting quite so nice for me, I have to say. But I think it'll be alright once it's finished. Well, if you had something else, you'd cut it on the on the um, bias, wouldn't you? But that would take a lot more fur to be to to be able to do that. But then when you when you put the collar down, once it's done, can you see how you're getting that lovely curve in there? Whereas you wouldn't have that if it was just cut flat. And what that's doing is it's just adding that curve in, so that when that cut sleeve is there, you almost get like a Peter Pan effect with the fur. And we can go through and just mush that fur up and you won't even see those those cut edge joins. That's what it looks like from underneath now with those fanned out. So, oh. so that's from the upper collar. That's from the lower. That's from the upper collar. That's from the lower. That's from the upper collar. That's from the lower. And then I'm going to carry on around here now and just finish that off. So I hope that all makes sense for you anyway. It's the best way I can describe it and I hope that seeing somebody do it has helped. And I'm just going to pull the fur out on my neck edge as well 
um, and need to know that and just get rid of all of this that's just going everywhere because we've got all those cut edges haven't we so we're going to lose some fur anyway um, and then I will come back to you okay so I've got my collar all on there and I've just fluffed up the neck edge that's going to give a nice fluffy edge on the edge there against um, um, Florin's head and I just wanted to show you the, the back end of here just so that you've got this in mind so that bit there is from the top edge this bit here is from the bottom that bit there is from the top edge this bit here is from the bottom so I've spread them and then sewn them together as best as I can I mean it's a bit rough but it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it um, in order to, that the when the jacket is pulled open to go around the neck each piece of collar slots into each other to give you a lovely rounded kind of shape and that's the best way I can describe it I'm afraid but that three inches has worked really well and the approximate um, marks that I made as well as has worked really well and we can actually try that onto Florin now and just see if when we've got the front in place and the back in place then yeah that looks like that's going to fit quite nicely onto there so these will be pulled down and he's got a lovely collar and the, the front bit is going to revere back aren't they so I'm happy I'm happy with that um, for now and I, as I say I always put notes up anyway if I'm not so the next thing now I'm going to do is take our sleeves and fold those in half just one sleeve at a time and then we're going to put a pin in at the underarm point just put one seam allowance one way and one the other then down to the hem and put a pin down towards the hem so that holds that together for you and then on the edge of the sleeve here, we're just going to fold the fur trim, the fur inside itself, so not the trim, the fur to the edge so that we can see the mesh because we want to catch the mesh in the seam and you want your ribbon to be about on top of each other as well, as best as you can, just can make that pattern matching lovely. And just fold that. I'm sort of folding the, the, the fur in and down so that it's going to hide all of that and then put a I'll make sure that my ribbon is matching and put a pin in just there out and into my finger too so being very careful not to get anything in my fur we're just going to start here and do a straight stitch along here so let me just change it off my um too much and to change my needle position to number seven that'll give me my seam allowance and then let's take a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back just to tidy that off and then I'm going to put my needle in my work as before I take my first pin out and I'm travelling up to the underarm I'm going to slow down as I kind of get there and then I'm going to stop on that underarm seam with my needle in my work because then I'm going to lift up my presser foot and twist my work down so I can do the seam allowance coming down the side of the jacket And then I'm going to, and I'm, I reversed and I'm reversing at the start and at the end as well. Take these threads off. Just careful not to cut through the fur. So that's what we've just done. We're just sewn there, down to here. At the underarm I've pivoted and then come down. And we do need to just put a little snip in. So where the, where the square of the underarm is and the square of the stitching, you're going to do a little snip that almost joins those two together because you just need that to spread so that the sleeve will go round the right way round. So I'll do the other side and then we'll come back to you for the turning round. Okay, so here's our two side seams done and underarm seams done. Oh, I need to just snip this one. I nearly forgot myself. Turn on that side, I can see better that side. Okay, so not through the stitches, but just up to it. I've done that on both sides. And then we're going to turn this through. Now, so you just need to just be careful with this because that fur is going to make it just a bit tricky. So just kind of be pushing from the other side, I think, is probably best. Oh. She wasn't kidding, was she? Okay, just keep, just keep, just, don't, I've got my thumb in the arm hole and just, or a finger and just push that through from the other side is probably better than pulling because if you pull you're just going to pull out fluff you know loads of fluff aren't you so just smooth that round so that's all looking all nice okay let's do the other one so let's put a thing let's push in from the other side aren't we so yeah it's better to push it than you are to pull it oops there we go okay there we go 
So two lovely sleeves on there. I mean, it's like a little light crop jacket, isn't it, really, I think, by the time it's finished. And we've got the front bit here, which we'll finish later, but we need to put the fur down the bottom here and the ribbon around the side first before we can do that. So the next thing that we're going to do then is we are going to attach the ribbon exactly the same way as we did on sleeves. So let's get our end of our ribbon, uh, end of our ribbon, end of our fur. And we're going to do one centimetre in yeah, one centimetre in. So let's put that, see where our one centimetre is. There. So I'm just marking one centimetre in from the jacket edge on the front and on the back, just to give us a start and end point with my Frixion pen. And I'm going to take my fur, match it up to that starting point. And I'm just going to pin it on as we go round. When I get to the seam allowances, I'm going to press those, it's just to fold those open so they're not too bulky. Put a pin in the centre of the back of the jacket as well, just to hold it on, well, probably before then actually. It does look lovely, but it's, it is... Um, to work with but we can get there step by step just taking our time remembering this is the first time we've made this jacket as well so you know you've got to just be you've got to be kind to yourself sometimes open up that seam allowance make sure the edges are all matching And then we're coming up to that one centimetre mark, aren't we, again? So I'll, I'll pin it on first before we then go and cut it so that we don't cut it short. Yeah, so it's about there. Okay. So let me just snip through the fur at the end point. And by pinning it on this way, rather than, cut, than, than measuring and cutting to start off with, you're just guaranteed that you're going to get right to the point that you want to. Let's just put a pin at the end there. Okay, so we then pin on, we then sew on this lower edge first, don't we, with a zigzag. Lots of stitching, moving your stitches round on this garment, isn't there? So back to our over, over uh, our um, zigzag, and I have to sew with my fur up because the my feed dogs don't like the fur against them so just do it again just going over the edge just folding the, the fur back put your needle in the work you have to remember when you're on a zigzag to make sure that your needle is actually going into your fabric before you then adjust so I just hand cranked that that time seam allowances on your side seams want to be open back and under if you can so take your new pins out because of my big hands being in the way it's really hard to get good camera angles when you're doing this kind of thing so you're trying to trying to show but trying to do at the same time so we're getting there and then we've got ribbon to put on this as well Use my quick on pick just to fold the fur underneath the press support so it gives me a nice clear edge to follow. Okay, I've got a reverse stitch just there just to hold it. So there's my snips. Okay, 
Okay, so here's the fur on the bottom, as you can see with the zigzag stitch, and that's what it looks like from the from the top. So it looks a bit messy, doesn't it? But we know that we're going to just use our quick and pick and fold out that fur, use it within those stitches, and it'll pull out that fur, and that when, then when we smooth it all down, it will hide those stitches. But you've got you have to go back and just pull that fur out of the of the stitches that you've just done. Can't see then, can you? Because it's light. Because that's what makes the fur kind of full enough to then be able to be folded back and smoothed over. Because if you don't do that, but you're just left with a rough edge. So that's what we've done on the top edge. So let's put pins back in again just to hold that fur down in the right place for us. Because now we're going to attach the sew it along the top edge onto the body of the jacket rather than the hem of the jacket. And then we'll go back and we'll sew the ribbon over the top of that seam again, like we did before. So in theory, it's quite straightforward, the jacket is, isn't it? I mean, I think it's the understanding the written instructions for the collar um, and how to place those on top of each other that, that have caused them. And then just working with the fur which isn't always helpful. So let me go this way this time. Okay, so let's pop that back down again. Let's try and smooth the fur out of the way of the stitches so we can see where we are. Okay, where's my awl? Let me use my awl instead of my quick and pick because that does make it easier. It's hidden somewhere. Oops, there, got it. Right. So now we can smooth that fur across, and we're going to just take a couple of stitches. on the wrong place. So just a couple of stitches there, and then just fold and put my needle in my work. Put this first pin out, and just use it just to smooth that fur and just to hold it in place, so we make sure we're catching that down. Make sure you don't sew any um, creases into your body of your jacket as well whilst you're doing this section. It just leaves out the way whilst you're working. Just, just fold that fur back. So you're just folding back the, the fibres of the fur, not the, not the mesh edge. It just gives you a line that you can just see then where you're sewing. I'm hoping that um, the bouffle on Pair Hiver is going to be a bit easier to sew than this when we start having to do all of that. got fur to do on hat yet haven't we as well that's the other thing that we've got to do let's take the pin out oh net it right nearly there started. I'm just going to just reverse just at the end there just to hold that. Okay. So this is what it looks like. We'll take off the starting threads first, make it look a bit neater. So this is what it looks like from the inside. You've got your two rows of zigzag stitching on the inside. Look, holding that fur down, one at the top and one at the bottom. And then when we turn it over, we've got to just pull the fluff out on here to make it nice. You can see where I started to and that what a difference that makes in that section. But now we're going to take our ribbon and then we're going to lay that over the top. So let me just get my ribbon and then we'll be laying that over the top to hide this top hem. So that's just the ribbon just going on there. So I'm making sure I've got my dot sides up. Don't sew it on upside down. And I'm leaving that fur all down at the moment. 
smooth that out later. I'm not going right up to the edge of the jacket because remember that edge of the jacket is going to be folded over. So we're just going to sew that in place on the edge so that we're covering up the zigzag stitches that we, we attach the fur on with. I'm just putting these pins at right angles to the to the ribbon because that will make it easier then we can get closer to them before we have to take them out. Make sure if you've got any fluff in the way you just smooth that down because you want the fluffiness to be on the hem not hiding behind the ribbon. Okay, get in there. Just hold it with your finger until you can put a pin in. That's how that's starting to look. So it is going to be a little, kind of little shorty jacket, isn't it, really? I think the pair of hairs is much longer. Let me just smooth that all the way along there. Okay, nearly there. So one pin, one pin at the end there just to hold it. And now that we're there, I'll just snip off that spare. I wonder if the spare goes around his hat. Spare ribbon. Can't see on there. We might have enough, I don't know. We'll see when we get to it. Right, okay. So that's how it's looking at the moment with the pins in. So let's take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to change my top thread to that grey that I was using because my ribbon is a little bit more grey than, than I would say green. And my, my thread for sewing my jacket up is very definitely green. Change our stitch back over to a straight stitch. We need to remember to do that. Put our threads at the back. And this time I'm going to sew on the fur edge first, starting from this edge, and I'm going to move my needle across to position number seven, so that I'm right on the edge there. Making sure I'm recording. Oh, let, let me see if I can get you a better recording um, angle. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can work it with this. So, hands out of the way, Claire, if you can, if I can reach my pedal. A couple of stitches for a couple of stitches back and I'll just remember I haven't put my stitch length up to 2.8 which I've just done and I'm going to put my needle in my work as well so that's holding on to that so then let's start get that pin out as we go it's keeping the fur back and out the way and the edge of the ribbon see how they all just helps hold the ribbon in place Just straighten it out because you've got a curvy garment and you've got a straight seam that you want to sew. So just straighten it out under your... Hopefully that's a bit better. Out. Try not to sew through the centre of the circles if you can help it. Because that's going to interfere with the way that the circles look, isn't it? And we're just trying to cover up the zigzag stitching with the ribbon where we attach the fur of the hem. So coming down to this section, take a few more stitches forward. A needle in the work, lift up your presser foot, pivot your jacket towards you. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches up the ribbon and then pivot again. Am I far enough up? Yes. And then I'm going to come back down this side again now. So again, holding the jacket out of the way. I'm just trying to make sure we've not got any folds in any of your garment at all. Mm. 
and you're really just interested in the in the areas. Oh, I have gone through some of my bows there. So we're trying to film. I can't be close enough to see. I might well unpick that seam and just do it again, but hopefully you've been able to see the theory of what I'm doing. Reverse at the end. You needle out of the work. And just cut your threads. Start and stop. They're always neat. And then there we go, there's our ribbon onto the top row of stitching I'm very happy with, this bottom row I'm not so happy with. I'll see how it looks when I fluff up the fur, and if you can't see it too much when I fluff up the fur, I might unpick that and just redo that, because I want my stitching to be below the circles, really. And it's going over in a couple of them, but anyway. So, now I would use my quick unpick or my awl, probably my quick unpick, I think it's got a little snag on it, or a pin. And you're just going to pull all of that fur out of that seam just down so that when you then fluff it it looks really full i think you can fluff it anyway you perhaps don't need to pull, pull it out but i think it just helps to make sure that you've not got any fur caught up inside that seam anywhere and you've got it all on your jacket which is where you want it to be okay so next thing i'm going to do is just go along and just just tidy up this this edge here and make sure that that's looking nice. Get, make sure the fur is coming down so that I can fluff that up. And I'm going to go along the hem here as well and take out all the fluff here out of that stitching that's just got caught down because that'll just make that lovely and fluffy again. Hopefully you can see. Yeah. And that's going to make that lovely and fluffy again just for, for this florin. For flooring to wear. It also helps hide the stitches as well, doesn't it, nicely? And then all we've got to do then is we've got to then fold the back of these reveres and just top stitch that down in place to hide the ends of the the fur, which is what we're going to do next, and do the ends of the um, ends of the collar there because I think that should pull forward so that that just gets caught into there as well. And then that's going to fold over there. So let's let me um, just move the camera so that I can I can work, and then I'll come back to you. Maybe a second. Okay. So let's fold this over. So we've got about one centimetre. We know we have anyway, because that's what's in the instructions. So we're just going to fold that over. There's the pins. I'm just going to pin this just slightly at an angle. I think that's what's going to be best. You're trying to keep that even all the way down the front. And then the idea is to catch the end of the collar into that seam as well, because that's what's going to keep that edge of that collar all nice and neat. So I think I'm going to put a pin in there, and then I'm going to put a pin just holding that collar down as well. Probably shouldn't have used a white one, should I? Let's use this one instead. Use the white one on the green. could hand stitch this if you wanted to, either with embroidery floss if you wanted, or you can machine stitch it down. You're just getting the edge of the collar in there so that you've got all of that in there as much as you can have. Let's go to the other side. Same thing here. I'm trying to get them so that they look, look even. edge of your fur just fold that back so you can see the edge of the mesh so that you can pull the collar around slightly so that, that gets caught behind that revere of that that jacket just put it on just to hold that on place on the top of the thing okay so let's have a look at those and see how they're looking they're looking okay aren't they so that's what we're going to do now is oh fluff on my nose again still <laughs> So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this to the machine, change my thread again to, for my green thread on the top. And if you've not got a needle threader on your machine, if you buy, if you ever buy a new machine, make sure you get a needle threader on it because it's so quick and easy. Right. So stitch length up to two point eight. That's what we want. 
because we want to be towards the edge of the um, revere because otherwise you're not going to catch the edge of your um, mesh for your fur. Keeping your fur out of the way. Oh, look at all the fur coming off. And then trying to keep a nice even distance down the edge. But you've got to be quite close to the edge of the of the um, revere because you need to catch through the mesh edge. You need to catch through the mesh, mesh edge of the fur because that's what this is doing. It's catching through the edge of the ribbon and neatening that off and it's catching through the mesh edge of the fur and holding that down and in place. And just reverse at the start and the end just to make sure that's secured. Take the ends off here. I'll show you what I've done. So the collar goes over the end of the, the mesh edge in there and this side too. I've got some fur caught in there but I can pick that out. Take these threads off this side so once you've done both sides. And there we go. Lovely fur collar there covering over the edges. There's our two edges there of our jacket. Caught them both down, which is nice. And then, all I, as I say, all I need to do now is just finish off picking out all this fur out of the edge. So let me just go off and do that. And then we'll have a try on with florin. A little bit of felt popping out there. I'll just drop that off. That's just a little bit of seam allowance that's just gone through to the other side. Don't need that. And then I'll pop back to you and we'll have a bit of a trying on fa and fashion show and we'll have a look and see how it all looks. Okay, and here's our finished jacket with the fluff all pulled out of there or making it all lovely. So let's try it on then. That's the, the moment of truth, isn't it? Let's get, oh, it's quite narrow on the sleeves. See so if we can get flowing into his jacket. There's one arm in. Let's go around to the other. And get his other arm in. There's a little bit of tugging going on just to get those on, but it fits on okay. So it is wanting to pull to the back a little bit. But there we go. I think it looks quite smart in that. Obviously, there's fluff just coming off all over the place. But there's flowing in his in his lovely fur edged jacket there, which is all lovely. And there it is from the back with all the ribbon on it and all looking all nice with his fur. So I'll just turn the camera around and we'll just do a little bit of a chat before then we get on with making his hat and his boots. And so here we are on the other side of um, sewing Florin's jacket. Um, I hope you enjoy have enjoyed sitting along with me while we've made this. It does look rather spectacular, I have to say. Um, and a little bit fiddly in places, but do you know what? Totally doable, just taking your time. But yeah, quite an interesting make, actually. And I've got fluff everywhere. It really is, just gets on your, on your face and starts to tickle. Um, but Florian's looking very nice. So um, as I say, thank you for watching. If you've been not subscribed yet, but you're finding value in my videos, I'd really appreciate it if you just hit the subscribe button. Um, love to know that you're around and that you're following me. That's always good. And the more people who follow me, then the more people that YouTube will pass this video on to because they'll see it as value um, content of value. And so they'll pass it on. So if you'd really pre I'd really appreciate it if you felt able to do that. Um, if not, then I'll just see you on another day. Um, but yeah, thank you for sewing with me along today and um, we'll get on with his hat and his boots next and then Florin will be complete. Happy stitching, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye.